Hey everybody, Steve here at Ivy Lawn Memorial Park in Ventura, California, which is just a couple of miles from the beach and just a couple of miles from the school where the incident that I'm going to tell you about today occurred. And I want to give you fair warning before I tell you what happened to the young man whose gravesite that I'm here to visit today. If you have a heart, this video will probably break it, but maybe not for the reason that you would expect. So I just wanted to give you a heads up before you continue watching. I'm sure you read the headline before clicking on this video, but the reason this is going to break your heart isn't really because of the senseless, tragic murder. That was horrendous and heartbreaking and just awful. But for me, that wasn't the saddest part of the story. On February 12, 2008, at E.O. Green Junior High School in Oxnard, which is just a couple of miles from the cemetery here, 15-year-old Lawrence, or Larry King, was shot to death right in his classroom in front of the teacher and all of his fellow students. And he was shot in the back of his head by a fellow student. He was rushed to the hospital and put on life support, but soon it became clear that he was brain dead, but his family decided to donate his vital organs so they kept him on life support until that could be done. Now, I've read a couple of different stories online, and they each list different dates of when he was taken off life support. His Funny Gray Memorial page lists his date of death as February 13th, and he was shot on February 12th. And a couple of other sources list his date of death as, as Valentine's Day, February 14th. So I'm not sure if he was removed from life support on the 13th or the 14th, but the articles did mention that his heart went to another young child who needed a heart, and that child received Larry's heart on Valentine's Day, February 14th. So this is just one of the strangest stories. Lawrence, or Larry, asked a boy in his class, one of his classmates, to be his Valentine for Valentine's Day. This was February 11th. The next day, February 12th, the 14-year-old boy, Brandon McInerney, came to school with a gun, shot and killed Larry. Larry died on Valentine's Day and was buried here in this cemetery, which is on Valentine Road. How weird is that? So as I said, this happened in 2008, and at the time, for some reason, I didn't hear about it. I missed this story, even though I've read since that it made headline news around the country and around the world. But for some reason, I didn't hear about the story until HBO released a documentary called Valentine Road, which told the story of this tragic death, of what happened between Larry and Brandon, and how it led to Larry's death. So this is one of those stories where everyone knew what happened. Depending on the article that you read, and there are lots of them online, some say that Larry was openly gay, some say that he was just exploring his sexuality. Others said that right before the murder took place, about a week before, he asked everyone in school to start calling him Letitia, and that he was trans. So he was only 15 years old. He liked to wear women's clothing and makeup and high heels to school. So he was pretty provocative. He wasn't completely innocent as far as pushing everyone's buttons. It seems by all accounts that he was bullied mercilessly by many of the kids at school, but he didn't take it lying down. He fought back and he was a pretty strong kid or he had a pretty strong personality, wasn't shy about being openly gay or trans. And at that age of 15, most of us aren't very mature. In fact, most of us are pretty immature. And we don't always think through the consequences of our behaviors and actions. So when the documentary pointed out that Larry had asked Brandon to be his Valentine in front of Brandon's high school friends, I don't think any of us would have been surprised if either Brandon or Brandon and his friends had beat him up. That's just the reality, unfortunately, when it comes to sexuality, especially in high school, when you're just trying to figure out who you are. And in our very, very rigid culture here in the US and you know most of the world, I think almost everybody I don't think anyone would be surprised if Larry ended up with a bloody nose and a black eye. I mean, that's just, unfortunately, that's just the reality of the world we live in. But I don't think most people would expect him to be murdered because of it. Although that's kind of the reality too. That's not uncommon at all. It happens all the time, especially with transgender individuals, and especially transgender individuals of color. Now the irony, one of the many ironies, is that in the class that day, they were working on an assignment about tolerance. Larry was multiracial, so combined with the fact that he was also a member of the LGBT community, 
that's two strikes against you and you're definitely a target even if you don't provoke anyone that just that's just again how the world is on the other hand Brandon was white he was Caucasian he was very popular he was a school jock had lots of friends a girlfriend very well liked both of the kids were very well liked they also both had very difficult home lives for very different reasons and I won't go into all of the background you can watch the documentary if you haven't already seen it it's excellent again it's called Valentine Road but here's for me where the story gets really weird and really twisted really bizarre and just completely unbelievable so if the murder wasn't bad enough the heartbreaking part for me is that at least after watching the movie the documentary it really appears as if Almost everyone, the majority of the, the staff at the school, the students, the jury, the prosecutors, I mean, pretty much everyone involved in this case, almost everyone sided with the killer. I mean, how is that possible? But again, you know, we live in a time when the world is upside down when it comes to reality in a lot of ways. I mean, it's a little bit understandable when, again, you look at the times that we live in. The victim was a multiracial, member of the LGBT community and his killer Brandon was a very popular white teenage jock at the school with all of the privileges that comes with that so it's not completely surprising that almost everyone seemed to take his side I mean everyone said well he's only 14 years old he didn't know what he was doing and for him to be charged as an adult for this to be charged as a hate crime for this to be charged as first-degree murder it certainly appears that it was all of those things but people just went berserk thinking that this poor kid might spend the rest of his life in jail the first jury was a hung jury the jury admitted to being on the side of the killer of Brandon they took his side they felt like he had been provoked by Larry and it does seem like he had been provoked but that still doesn't make it okay to kill somebody I mean people are provoked all the time and if juries allowed everyone that was provoked by someone to go ahead and just kill them there wouldn't be a lot of people left on the planet and the part that I found just so hard to understand is that everything they were saying about Brandon was true it was heartbreaking that this poor kid from a broken home by all accounts did something rash he was just as immature as Larry I mean they both were kids doing dumb things the kids do so I understand why people would feel so bad about Brandon but what I didn't understand is why no one felt bad about Larry if you're not a minority and and you've lived a life of privilege in lots of different ways it's really hard sometimes to sympathize with others who aren't in 2011 the jury just couldn't come up with a unanimous decision which is completely unbelievable to me since it was a pretty cut and dried murder everyone saw it everyone knew what happened and why it happened but the jury and they said in the documentary they did side with the killer they felt like he was the one who had been abused and I guess Larry deserved to be killed because he had asked Brandon to be his Valentine how dare a boy ask another boy on a date or to be his Valentine well of course even though so many people were on the side of the killer in such a an awful crime like this there was just no way that they could just let it go and not bring it back for a second trial so I guess what they did from what I've been able to figure out by reading the different articles online in order to get anyone to convict Brandon originally they were trying him as a as an adult I think what they had to do and I certainly don't understand it and I guess you guys can decide for yourself if it makes sense to you and it doesn't really matter because it is what it is but in order to get some kind of a conviction they just had to lower all the charges they instead of first-degree murder they lowered it from premeditated murder to second-degree murder and voluntary manslaughter carries a lesser sentence and they also remove the hate crime charge but he did end up receiving a sentence of 21 years and I actually I believe that they didn't go to trial the second time I think that's why they lowered the charges he agreed to this sentence if they lowered the charges from first degree to second degree murder and if they remove the hate crime charges I I'm not in the legal profession so I don't really know all the laws but I do believe that with those two charges it probably would have been a mandatory life sentence or maybe even a death sentence so those were removed and he did receive a sentence of 21 years and 
before coming here today, I checked to see, and as of 2021, he was still behind bars at the California Correctional Center. And it's been about 13 years now, I guess. So his sentence will be up in about eight years. Now, I don't think anyone will be surprised if he gets out early on good behavior. So he'll be in his 30s when he gets to resume his life. But Larry doesn't get to resume his life. So justice, I don't know. You can decide for yourselves. I know it's not always easy. I know it's very complicated. And in some ways, it's surprising that he received any time at all. I mean, as we've seen just in some of the other grave sites that I've visited, when it comes to members of the LGBT community, often the killer just gets a slap on the wrist. I think this was a little bit more than a slap on the wrist. I'm not sure how much more, but, you know, I'm not going to judge. I, you know, it's not up to me to decide. I'm just here to remember Larry and his short life. And stories like his definitely shouldn't be forgotten. Swept under the rug, forgotten with time. It's important to remember his life and to take any lessons away that we can. So I'll let you decide what the lessons are. So even though this was an especially sad visit to the cemetery today, thank you all for joining me. And until our next trip to the cemetery together, thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.